Okay, let's look at this next question. Let's say this is a self-service place and the group decides to appoint one of them to fetch the food. How many different possibilities? So the group is four people and we would like to select one of them. Therefore, we can do this clearly in four different ways. Okay, now let's change the question a little bit. Suppose the trays are large and therefore they need two people to carry the plates. And in this case, how many possible appointments? So we would like to select two out of four. Now, if we apply what we have done so far, so selection one, let's say, and selection number two. Now in, in the selection number one, I have four possibilities. And since I select one of them, I cannot appoint that person a second time. I need two different people. I would need um, one of these remaining three possible people. But now you see there is order here. For instance, let's say if I select Ali plus friend one to carry the trace, this could be Ali in the first selection and friend one in the second selection. But this could also have been friend one in selection one and Ali in selection number two. So these two in this scenario are exactly the same because I just need the group. I do not need the order. I just have a selection of people. Here, I do not care about the order. So this is different. The product of these two, 12, gives me the number of permutations, two permutations out of four. But what I need is not permutations because the order now has lost its significance. Since I can order these two in two different ways, I need to divide this by also two to obtain six. That would be the number of possible uh, two person groups to be selected out of four. Okay, so this we call sampling without replacement, without order. Now, again, we do not have replacement, so no reuse of items. However, now we also do not care about the order. Choose a group of K items. You see, this is no longer a sequence. It's a group because we stopped caring about the order. So it's a group of K items out of a population of N, no reuse of items. And this we call a combination. Okay. Now, how can we uh, derive the general formula for uh, a combination of K items out of a population of N? Okay. So to do this, we are going to think back to permutations. And we can compute the number of permutations k out of n in two ways. First one, we have already seen, right? Selection one, I have n alternatives. Selection two, I have n minus one alternatives and so on. So that gives me this result. We have already done this. But now think about this. If you select a combination of k items out of a population of n, and then you permute those k items, within themselves, you still get a K permutation out of N. So instead of selecting them one by one in order, what you do is you first, without order, you select a group of K and then order them among themselves. That still gives you a K permutation. So choose a combination K out of N first and then permute them. And obviously, since we are doing the same thing, the number of permutations here should be equal to the number of permutations uh, I find using this approach. So choose a combination K out of N first. Let's denote that with uh, this notation, C and K, and permute them. Okay, and I can do that in K factorial ways. So you see, I'm, I'm using the product rule here. I'm splitting the, uh, the operation of finding a K permutation out of N into two 
subtasks, let's say. First, I find a combination of K and then I permute them, which I can make in K factorial ways. That should give me exactly this, N factorial divided by N minus K factorial. And if you actually put this on the right-hand side, what you get is the very well-known binomial coefficient formula. The number of K combinations out of a population of N is given by N factorial divided by N minus K factorial times K factorial, which we also denote uh, in this way. And um, sometimes this is termed N choose K.